Welcome back to simulation and prototyping. What I want to do is I want to take everything that we've been working on and developing and learning about, and I want to bring it all together. And we're going to develop something like, hopefully something like what we see on the screen here. The thought is that you'll take, well, what I wanted to do was to give you a kind of pseudo project and kind of build in the discipline and the control in a way that one might typically work with a workflow. And so the file that I'll give to the students in the course is what we see in Rhino on the right hand side, minus the grasshopper stuff. So that's that red surface there. some of these other things but what you'll get and what we're what we're looking at is developing an enclosure or a skin for a kind of sporting event building off of this idea about um, uh, Luigi Moretti developing a notion of parametric design and some of his work within sports complexes here what you will do is you'll take these some some or all of these 16 frames and we're going to draw a curve within each one and so i want to just work through with you some of you have used grasshopper now more than you've used rhino and just look at how these things are structured a little bit and so how the how they'll work how i've set it up with the layers and then let's develop the grasshopper script based on what we've learned in this module leading up to this as a way to develop a lofted surface where we have a high level of control over what's happening. And if I just zoom in, you can also begin to see here the series of the green is the curves that I've drawn. The red lines here is what's being developed within Grasshopper. And so that we'll be able to control how many divisions there are, the depth of those divisions, and then also how whether they lay kind of flat or they get more variegated. So let's take this and let's see, I'm gonna do a new grasshopper file. And what does that mean for our Rhino file? That means that I just wanna delete. And so you can see the, the default Make this a little bit larger now while we look at it. The default layer, and I can turn everything off except for some of these, the default layer is kind of just laying this out basically. Oh, there's some of the older stuff. Get rid of that. And so zero, zero, zero is here. With the seaplanes, we can see when we set that to the top view, it defaults to zero, zero, zero. So basically a field and then some idea of, of seating that would be around it. I then created a series of frames, thinking about how one might work within that, within a shape. There's a surface for a really, a, can't talk to the validity of this, but a kind of a notion of a kind of seating bowl where, where there's a sporting event in the middle. Um, I've labeled each of those frames, so it's easier to, to keep track of them. There's a section through the seating surface so that if we want to turn off the seating, we can still have some reference of where that is in terms of within frame number one, or how we'll draw a curve within frame number one, and then where that seating is. Uh, I'm gonna draw on this layer curves. I think there's nothing on layer one. Not that I see. If I hide everything else, I can get rid of these curves. Basically, this is some notion of drawing these within here. I also, there's a light 
in the space and you can manipulate that if you want, if you wanted to render something. So I'm gonna turn back on the frames and the seating sections and the labels. And now I'll have these to work with. And so we'll set this up and then we'll begin working on our grasshopper. Okay, so where were we last time? We start with a curve. And, and for the most part, you'll have most of this developed. There's a couple of simple tweaks that we're gonna have to make and we'll work through that and we'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna start almost instantly within Rhino and just make a simple curve. And so I'm on the curves layer. Again, that doesn't matter, but just as a way to keep these things straight, I'm gonna use a NURBS curve and I'm always gonna go from outside to the inside. If you flip those, you'll just end up having to flip the plane or deal with something else. But if you draw these things consistently, you'll, you'll be all right. And so I'm gonna start here, basically just draw up and over. Oh, and here's a good way to start. So I was just drawing what I thought was right on the, um, on the panel here, but I was actually drawing on the XY plane. So that reminds me that we have to set our C plane. And so for those of you that haven't done much in Rhino before, we wanna to go to the tab that says C plane. We'll set this using three points and I'll start in the inside corner across the bottom and then vertically. Now we have a construction plane on our, on our number one panel here. Now, if I draw here and I'm gonna hold it off the ground thinking that this might be a kind of entrance area, come up and through and then up, right? So our curve, the green curve is planar and it's sitting within that panel. So that's, that's good. We can, you can also name your C plane. So if you wanted to come back and so we can call this 001 to match the tag for that panel. So now we have that. So let's set our curve container in, in Grasshopper with this first curve. So that's good. While we're here, why don't we just start with the length just so we can double check these things as we go. And so plug in the length and we'll create a panel to go with this so that we can just have a readout. So this is just about 200 feet long. And let's divide this. And I know we've done this before, so I'm gonna go quickly through these. We'll divide curve. We also know that we're gonna have two divide curves. So I can even copy this now. We are going to have a division, I think what we were calling in the previous tutorials D. Uh, so this will be one less than, let's say we'll start with five again, is less than 50. And so that'll be the count. The curve will feed in. And so we'll leave the second one alone for, for a few minutes and now let's take a look at what we're going to do. We are going to, we want to take that division. We want to divide. Well, let's, we also know the other slider that we're going to need, and I'm even going to pull this over. I'm going to call this divisions. And then let's make another slider. Three, we'll start at 300 and we'll make this a, a 500 foot slider. And this we will call, this will be L2 
because L1 is based on the geometry within Rhino. And so we have that, we have those things. Let's now plug in to our second, we do know that we have our, our second division is actually going to be um, twice, let's see. two times the division. So we'll add a multi multiplication here. And we'll add a small panel, which is two. And we know that it was also that the count here defaults to 10, so it doesn't look like too much changed, but we have a control with it now with the slider. So that's good. Um, let's see, let's deal with our two, with our cull pattern, and we'll deal with trying to draw our lines and make sure that those things are working. So the first division I actually don't even need to worry too much about because we'll we'll just keep that as it is. The second division, we will call that pattern. And our list will be those 10 points. Our pattern will be driven from a panel. Again, we'll right click it and make it multi-line data. And let's even just for the interest of time, say zero and one which is false and true. And so that's, that's looking good. And we wanna copy this and use it as we learned in the last tutorial for the tangents as well. So now we can use the points and the tangents separately. Let's now make a line and this line will be the start, direction, and length. And so for here, it'll be the start will be the points, the tangency will be the direction, and let's set the, this, the length will change, but let's for a second just put in a really simple slider just so we have something there. And now we can see we're starting to see the lines along here at every other uh, position within there. We can hide some of these things as we go. And we want to rotate these. And here's, we're gonna end up adding something that we didn't do before. And this is something that I learned as I was, as I was prepping for this. So the geometry that we're gonna rotate is are these lines. The angle we need to set to degree. And let's set that to be, well, let's see. I'll steal this panel from over here. We'll set this to be 90. The angle, and now the plane. Now, when we drew this before, we did this in the XY plane. And what I realized is that when we plugged in, in our rotate, we plugged in the, these points. And what I didn't realize when we did that is that there was a kind of implicit notion of the XY plane and it worked. And so when I, when I set out to do this, not in the XY plane, some things started to get a little wonky. And I'll, I'll explain to you as we do this, how, what, what worked before and what we need to change. And so, um, and if you'll see, let's see, let's just plug that in and I'll show you. And as we look from the side, you see these lines are rotating around the point, but they're moving in different weird directions. 
I tried a number of different planes and different things. And so what we need to do is to actually set a plane at that point in order to define its rotation. We didn't do that, have to do this before because of, again, the implicit understanding that it was X, Y. So we're gonna use the plane origin. We're gonna use two, two plane tools actually. So if we go up to planes, we're gonna use plane origin and we're going to use plane line line. And we'll see how these combine. So first of all, we're gonna grab our culled pattern of points. This will be our origin. So that is fine. And now we can even plug this in for plane. It's not working yet because we need some more information. We actually need a base plane. And this is what was happening before is that there's an implicit X, Y with that. And so for us to give it a plane, we'll give it this plane that's two lines. And let me set two line containers. And what we'll do with these is we'll plug them in line A and line B, and we will grab the two lines. So maybe the bottom line here, we'll set one line. Make sure your snaps are making sense. So that's our first line and then our second line. And so using these two lines, that allows us to set a plane. We can see these planes now just arrived on the curve. And now our rotation is also making sense. And so I can hide these now and I can hide our line as well. And so now we can see our points coming out. And again, we just want to end up with our triangulated um, polyline across the top. And so we're almost there. And so we have with the, the description of those planes and that rotation, we have, we can grab the endpoints of this while we're here. So the rotated lines, we'll grab the endpoints, hide those rotations. And then where we go with this in a second is that we're actually going to um, have the weave. And we'll weave, this will plug into the second. So the endpoints will plug into the second stream. The first stream will be our first set of points from this division. We can hide them. Hide these endpoints. We can hide the cull pattern as well. And then this will end up with the polyline all the way at the end. So that looks good. It's working. It's in the right plane. All those things are behaving the way they are. Now let's circle back and, and include our expression so that we can control the overall length. And so what we're gonna want with this is the, uh, let's, let's come here. We'll do the expression editor. And we know that the top, the way that we did this before, we'll right click, we'll rename it, it's case sensitive. So we'll call the top one C, we'll call the other one A. And within the format, that's, I'll just double click it. And if you remember, it's square root of C squared, capital C squared minus capital A squared, close parentheses. And now we have to plug in the C and the A. So A is going to be a multiplier. And so we are gonna multiply, let's see, we have our multiplication here, which is the number of divisions. We're gonna take those divisions 
And this will be, let's see, C divided by A, that's a length. Might actually be a division. Let's look at that. Division, or di uh, yeah, the division. And we'll divide the overall length by the number of divisions. And so that will come from here. This tells us that that's about 19 feet. I think that sounds about right. This is A. So we'll plug this into A. And now C, what we want to get is we're going to multiply our D value or sorry, our L, our L2 value. We're going to end up multiplying that by that set of operations that we developed to work with the graph mapper. And the way that we'll do that, we'll start with the graph mapper, give it a Bezier type. We're using a range to control this. And the, range, the domain is from zero to one, we're gonna leave that. And now <clears throat> we're gonna do our series of steps which is we're going to, because it's the range, we remember we have to subtract one from our number of divisions. And so let's do a subtraction. And I know I'm going fast and I'm going fast because I know that you've already done many of these things or all of these things before actually. So it's just a matter of pulling them together. So we'll use our division, we'll subtract one, we'll get our range, that's our number of steps. Then we worked through that kind of conversion process, right? We did, we have a panel for the output, just so that we could see it. We did the the mass addition. We have a panel to see what that looks like, which will just be one value. We divided one by that value. gives us another value over here, which is 0.4. And then we're gonna take that result and multiply it times what's coming out of the graph mapper. So that result comes here. The values coming out of the graph mapper are here. And then just as the check, we'll do a mass addition of these, and that's equal to one. So that's fine. And so now we'll take the value that's coming out of that multiplication, and we're gonna multiply that Times the, oh, times the number of divisions, which was there. We will divide by two. And 
that will go into our C value. These will plug into the lengths of our lines. And let's see how this looks. Orbit around to get to a spot where we can see these. And so what's happening is that we've got high value and a low value. So if we bring these things down, we can see now we're starting to get, and I'm looking over here on the right, looking at some way, and you can control these. We'll get a little bit, we'll get more control when there's more divisions along that curve, but you can see you can use the graph mapper to start to smooth this out. Because what we're gonna be able to do is to decide where maybe that surface begins to lay flat. When it lays flat, it's gonna cause the other areas to be more pleated. And when that curve is longer or shorter, that will also have an impact on the depth of those, of those folds. So this, I believe, gets us to one layout here. And so the, the curve length is 200. We're at 300 here. If we increase this, obviously these increase. If we increase the number of divisions, we start to get a more um, consistent surface. And I'm just going to look to see what is on here. There's our points and there's our polyline. And so everything is hidden now except for our, our polyline. We can come back over here. We can manipulate So you can play a little bit with the graph mapper to just get some consistency here. What I'm getting is kind of flatter at the edges or at the ends and a little thicker or deeper folds at the middle. And so that's, that's looking good, that's working. So let's now do a couple of things. We're gonna group all of this together and I'm leaving the two outputs actually need that slider. I'm leaving the two outputs. And actually what we can do is we can pull our curve up and over. We can pull our two line inputs up and over. So our the geometry that we'll have to set will be in the, the top left. I do want to pull these two sliders out. I don't want them to be part of the group because I don't want to um, copy them. I want to keep them consistent so that I can have that as a global control for all of this. So we'll group and we can even name this 001. And this will correspond to our first panel here. Let's now add a couple more panels. I can slide this over a little bit. I can pull this down. So now let's do this again. Now we're in the mode of just simply repeating these things. So for as many um, cross sections as we want with our loft is how many times we'll end up copying this. So let's copy this down. I'll rename this one two. And then let's just remember how to set these things. We'll go through this a couple of times. Next thing that we'll want to do is set our C plane. We we'll use, make sure you're at the C plane tab and, and select set C plane by three points. We'll choose that. And we're kind of consistent about how we're selecting them. Now we can draw something here.
And maybe I just want to be a little more. consistent with how I do those things. So let's zoom in here to the second group. We'll set this curve. And let's set, and, and this works because the uh, plane that we set within Grasshopper is consistent. I just, as soon as we turn the corner to the next one is where we're gonna wanna make sure that this changes, but we'll set one. lower line and now we'll set the vertical line. And that should be good. And let's do, I, I need the kind of instant gratification of these. Let's do, um, we used weave as we brought these in before because we wanted to, to, to mesh those together. There's a similar tool that'll help us organize the loft. And that is under, let's see, it's under sets and under tree, and it's called entwine. And so this flattens those and combines data. And so as we set this, most, we'll see, most, some, some of the components, so weave is the case, as you zoom in, you can see these pluses. And so we can add additional streams coming in. The same is true with entwined. So as we move in, we can either subtract or add. So we're actually gonna need 15. If you, if you make a section, a cross section, at every one of these, you'll need 15 of those that are coming in. So our first polyline will come in to zero, zero. We can drag this down. Our second polyline will come into number one. And then we can add a loft with this. And so the entwine will help us organize the loft and allow us to add these things as we go. That didn't work. I think I just have to. But it was flattening. So there we go. We just have to flatten it as it gets to the loft. And then the, our first loft is created. That looks good, but let's do one more and turn the corner just so that you can understand how these things change a little bit. And so we'll drag the entwine and the loft down. We'll drag our two sliders down, although it doesn't matter because we'll just copy this whole thing. Slide that down. Right click it and we can renumber it three. And let's draw our curve. And so what's nice about this way of working is that you'll be able to come back in and manipulate your curves. And so I can't remember if we saved our second C plane, but let's save the one that we have now, 002. And now we can set this C plane and save it, 003. So if we want to come back and manipulate any of these curves, either their curvature, their length, their position, or location, we can come back to them, reset the C plane. We don't have to update anything else in Grasshopper other than manipulate the, the curve. So for this curve, let's draw maybe something similar. And you'll see as you begin to turn the corner the way that the geometry is gonna to have to, to work its way around. But let's set this curve. Now you can see that the, the curves that are created are not in the plane. 
because we haven't set our two lines. So we'll set the bottom line. And then we'll set the vertical line. And we may actually only have to set the horizontal line. The vertical, vertical lines are all vertical. Doesn't look like it changes too much with that. I think that is all we need to do. And now we just plug our polyline into the third location and we can see that the loft continues. So the ability that we've got, well, we, what we haven't done is manipulated the graph mapper at all. So if we go to the second graph mapper, maybe I wanna flip these. By flipping it, I mean, start to make it flatter. Uh-oh. Let's hope this recovers. Make it a little flatter through the middle and so that it gets deeper folds at the edges, smooths out in the middle and we can see the way that it begins to transition from one side to the other. So I always need to remember that I'm also doing a screen recording that my computer doesn't always like. So I ended up having to rebuild that, but I'm back to basically where we were a minute ago. And I've just added a fourth frame so that we could at least turn the corner. Now you should have the option to be able to change everything that we've been changing all the way through. You can control the distribution of the pleatedness throughout each curve and you can control um, we know the lengths of these curves roughly uh, or each of them and so we can use the overall control as well as the number of divisions so as we increase this this surface will get more pleats in it and as we increase the length, those pleats will get deeper or flatter across that surface. And so what I'd like you to do is to complete the process of working through these and begin to manipulate where you start to uh, have more flat surfaces as you think about this surface, where you might have more, more um, pleating. And so you can use the graph mapper at each moment. You can also go back to any of these and decide that you want to manipulate the curve, right? Here it's touching the ground. Maybe I want this to lift off the ground at this section. So all I need to do is either redraw that curve or uh, change the control points for it. So this should give you a sense of the level of discipline that's necessary when you really want to control some specific geometry. And if you wanted to even have these things split along the way, what we might do is have two strips or three strips where these things could pull apart from one another. And the way that you would do that is just to control separate geometry and have the pleating happening with those individual strips. Uh, the other thing that we know after last week, after the last module, is that all of these are just straight sections. So if we were to fabricate a model of this, we could unroll every single one of these individual folds and glue them back together and be able to build up this type of surface. So I hope this gives you some insight. And it's certainly the way that I've worked with this module to give you the kind of perspective of okay here's a kind of rough idea how to test it with a couple of smaller individual projects and then build these things in and combine all these things to the end where we have a um, i would say a, a, a certain level of discipline and control with this type of geometry now and be able to both work back and forth between the geometry within Rhino and how we define these things and where they're set up. And then 
kind of processing that geometry and bringing it even more rigor through the grasshopper process. So I hope you have fun doing this. It, I know it's these tutorials or these modules are getting more and more involved. That's the nature of the course. And that's the nature of your expertise in this area now as you build and as you grow with these things. So let me know if you have questions, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll be updated as new tutorials come online. And um, I look forward to seeing what you're working on. Thanks.